Lockdown software for beta printers supports that won't just freaking release three month old printers making weird ass noises and general print fails. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 26. Let's get into it. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here on the 3D Musketeers YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure you get subscribed. And if you think we deserve it, leave a like. We're going to start off by covering a fail from my buddy Titan's Revenge, who is dealing with some issues with build plate adhesion for resin. Their specific issue is in regards to a beta machine, so it may not apply to a ton of people here, but... I'm going to make it easy so it applies to more people. After that, we're moving into weird areas of under extrusion that are not under extrusion. It's bed adhesion problems. From there, we're moving into support settings that, well, probably shouldn't have been messed with. But we're going to talk about how to solve that problem. Three-month-old printers that are making a lot of issues. And we're going to end on elephant's foot problems for resin 3d printing something that i know a lot of people that print directly on their build plate would love to hear all the timestamps are next to me as well as in the chapters here in the video feel free to skip around as you want but let's get into these fails cover your ears i'm going to fucking scream titan's revenge good friend of the channel yep i know this pain i said what does the part look like happy to help right now looks like the bottom of my trash can that's a mood that i can get on board with i'm sorry that you're going through this my dude and as always we're gonna offer some assistance but ultimately it comes down to it is a beta machine and because it's not supported by lychee slicer he's kind of stuck running the stock settings and slicer and all of that which if you're used to running lychee is uh, like driving a car on the wrong side of the road it just feels wrong i'm looking at you great britain but if you are dealing with this and you are able to mess with settings and you're not stuck in a generic slicer that isn't even chi two box it's like manufacturer specific slicer here are some things that you can go over you can look at your exposure times when you are having parts that are not sticking to your build plate immediately look at running exposure test we can see here that a lot of the supports here did not stick whatsoever we can see that uh it looks like it did okay over there so maybe we're dealing with a build plate that's not level but i would immediately run an exposure test there are some great ones out there but to me i'm gonna run the ones inside of uv tools if i can otherwise i might grab the one from soraya tech and i think uh table flip foundry has a great test print for stuff like this but this particular case could also be that your bed is not clean or your bed is not level with resin printing if you have something on your build plate that is not going to promote adhesion something like oil from your hands maybe you wiped it clean before you started the print because the build plate was clean you went to just brush any dust off of it the oil from your hands can create a surface where resin does not stick but i can also look here and see that got some other issues we need to deal with this is nowhere near thick enough we, we don't have a thick enough base layer here normally you want to see at least four base layers minimum four base layers so we should be seeing something in the realm of 0.1 millimeter of hard base and then it's going to slowly transition over to your normal exposure times but because this is a beta printer we're going to have to worry about what settings we can adjust and why but again if you're not working on a beta printer look at your exposure settings make sure your prints are clean make sure your resin is well stirred good lord have mercy we talked about this in the resin maintenance video Right at the end, I showed you some great silicone brushes that you can use to basically scrape the bottom of your FEP without damaging it to mix up any of the pigment that might have fallen to the bottom of your resin tank should you leave your resin in the tank for an extended period of time. This can cause issues in your first few layers because it's going to be all pigment and it's not going to easily grab to the actual print surface itself. This could also be something like a suction cup. It could be really, really large cross-sectional areas of layers. Without being able to analyze the data, 
which we're not able to because the file format is proprietary and not yet supported by UV tools or, you know, any of the companies that we use for this kind of thing, we're going to have to make some pretty gross and basic assumptions. But here's the deal. I do want to cover more resin fails here on the channel. So if you are dealing with resin failures, make sure you tag us on social media. You can use these hashtags that are on the screen right now, or you can email us YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. I want to talk more about resin failures because I think we're starting to beat some of the regular fails of FDM to death. And I don't want these to get well repetitive. It gets boring, right? Just like my segues to our sponsor, 3d Musketeers. Look, it's simple. Failure sucks. I know it sucks. You know it sucks. All these machines back there know it sucks. Except they're Perusas, which means they don't fail a bunch. Hashtag not sponsored. But what I am sponsored to do is to tell you all about my own company, 3D Musketeers, where we help you get your ideas out of your head and into your damn hands. With 3D printing, CNC milling, laser cutting, and all the fun toys that require extra safety because fun toys generally do. We can help you make fails like this a lot less of a probability, and we deal with them so you don't have to. If you want us to take over your 3D printing for you, we have massive capabilities here. You can reach out to the pros at 3D Musketeers. Links will be in the description down below. And if you love what we do here on this channel, you want to support us directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers, or you can click the join button right below this video, where you should also be clicking like and subscribe. Let's get back into the fails. Weird areas of under extrusion, I'm a bit lost. Well, you should be, because it's not actually under extrusion. This is a classic case of bed adhesion problems. We can look at the rest of the print and see we're a little too far away. And we can tell this because we've got valleys in between. We're looking at the bottom of the part, okay? When you see valleys in between your lines, you're too far away and you need to bring your nozzle closer. But issues like this that you see here are normally caused by lack of adhesion to a build plate. This can reasonably easily be remedied. The first thing is to understand what printer you have. And in this case, it is an Ender 3 V2. We can see that it was recently upgraded to an all metal variant with Capricorn Bowden tube, as well as new yellow bed springs printed at 210 on the first layer, 205 every layer after that with point two first layer and 0.16 for the remaining filament was hatchbox pla bed temp was 60 and it seemed to adhere just fine Prusa slicer for making the g-code hell yeah as far as i can tell my bed is as level as i can get mesh in my firmware has a large z offset of 0.05 what might cause the result of this print it seems like only the first layer because structurally the part is fine and the top layers look basically perfect. Your bed is dirty and you need to clean it. So go through whether you're using alcohol, soap and water, use whatever's best for the type of bed that you have. And if you're using that glass carbonium bullshit that Creality uses that is actually silicon carbide and is actually damaging to your nozzles if your nozzle happens to scrape along it, shame. You don't want to use too much alcohol. You can. My preference would be hot soap and water, a little bit of Windex, and you'll be just fine. If it happens to be PEI, wipe it with some 91% or higher isopropanol alcohol, and you'll be good to go. That gets any of the oil, grease, whatever might be on that bed off, and life can be good once again. This is a common problem when you're picking up your print beds, where you're not grabbing it from the edges like you would a vinyl record. You're grabbing it from the top with your grubby meat hands. We don't want that. That's bad for business. Don't do that. And if you do it, make sure you clean your bed. Struggling to remove lower interface from supports. Is this a slicer setting I'm missing? Normally use Prusa Slicer. So let's take a look here. We've got two different prints. I wanna give a shout out to my guy here for giving really good photos. I've been messing around recently with drying filament. And I know I'm someone that says it's not wet filament, but I've actually found specifically for PET, when the filament is drier, it releases so much better for your supports. We're going to be doing a further in-depth study of this, but it's going to take me a couple of months to really get through it because I need to leave filament outside in Florida. So hi, filament manufacturers, any of you that are watching and you want to get your name on that project, hit me up. We're looking for a sponsor for that one. A title sponsor would be really, really nice. But we can see that we've got some lower support here that is just not wanting to come off. 
So what do you normally do? To do this, I think we have to go a little bit deeper. Let's go into Prusa Slicer. Here we have the wonderful bust of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Hopefully I didn't butcher that one too bad. But this bus is actually found on Prusa printers made by Prusa Research themselves. Thanks, Prusa. And supporting something like this can be an absolute disaster. We used paint on supports. As you can see, he looks like he's crying lime green stuff. And I, I, I made some judgment calls here to get the part. We can see that there are no bottom base layers. I think that's where they got screwed up. If we look at our settings here, we can look at the support material and we are running basically dead stock settings. The only difference is that we changed it from grid to snug and I let go of auto generate it and I turned it on. Okay. Literally, that's all that we do. We can see that the bottom interface layers are turned off. And when we look at this print, I believe we're looking at the bottom. Yes, we are. We are looking at the lower interface. You don't actually need it. And it can cause a lot of problems because these fat lines can be a pain in the ass to let go. But we can see some other inconsistencies in the print itself. I, I don't know if that's from shaking. It could be from poor extrusion. But we have some other issues that we might want to be looking at as well. And when we go to the comments, we're seeing a lot of people talking about tree supports. I need to get to this video. <laughs> really want to get it done but we're gonna do a video called tree supports versus the world where we really take a crack at tree support and see is it as good as the entire community says it is the one big issue with tree supports is if you don't have your retraction well tuned or you have a Bowden printer that needs an ass load of retraction you're going to have a bad time with tree supports but seriously like literally most people are saying tree supports, tree supports, tree supports. We can see that we can increase the interface distance, but stock, there isn't one. There should not need to be a bottom interface. And on a part like this, a bottom interface just makes your life more difficult. There's no reason to have it. And we can see that we have a couple of people that did find it. We're gonna give that guy an upvote so that they can get the attention that they deserve. And then we have comments like this, just use Cura, Prusa Slicer ain't worth it. And I'm glad that's being downvoted. So what's my remedy? My remedy here is let's just all together remove the bottom support. We can see that I'm fairly certain you are over extruding. And that would explain why everything is so well attached. We can see some ridges in between the actual infill lines here. So we have the infill lines. We can see some ridges in between them. This would indicate that over extrusion is occurring. And if you have over extrusion and you're putting support interface on it, it's going to weld right the frig to it. In a case like this, try going back to your stock settings. You can turn your speed up. I'm not going to tell you not to. We do it. But the stock settings in Prusa Slicer work really, really well. I don't know what's going on with the rest of that. It might be that we're looking at some fat layers. I think we are looking at some fat layers. But unfortunately, we don't have too many other settings from the user. Overall, though, removing those support interfaces at least for the bottom surface. Leave them on the top, but for the bottom surface, get rid of them and life will be good. Three month old printer making weird motor sounds all of a sudden seems to only happen for a few seconds when the print is starting any ideas. Let's take a listen. That stepper motor is not having a good time. So if I had to guess here, I believe your Z axis is slightly binding up. I would look at loosening the four bolts on each of your linear rail carriages just a little bit crack them loose run it all the way up all the way down tighten it and see if that noise goes away when you have linear rails that aren't well positioned or not dead parallel to each other they're going to cause binding you could also have an issue where your lead screw that drives this entire axis up and down is not properly lubricated but remember when in doubt lubricate if you think it might be dry, add a little lube to it. That's good life advice. But ultimately, it could be axis binding. The lead screw appears to be running straight and true. If we play the video again, I'm not seeing any obvious wiggling from the lead screw. It actually appears to be completely straight. And that's good because if the lead screw was bent, it's literally just you have to get a new printer. 
or a new lead screw, but a new printer is honestly easier. You can also look at the bolts that hold in the motor to the frame itself. That's actually something that we missed covering and somebody in the comments mentioned it in that maintenance video, which is great. I'm glad that we have an awesome community that is able to say, you missed something, here's what you missed, and it was actually valuable. Thanks guys, I appreciate all of your support, your comments, your likes, and the sort. But make sure those bolts are tight as well. The printer could just be resonating on a loose bolt. Resonances happen. And of course you're not going to hear it all that much during the print, because the printer is not moving all that much, right? It's only moving up by 0 0.05 millimeters every single layer. Now yes, it's got that retract and the detract to put it back into the resin, but personally, it's not moving anywhere near as much as we see in this clip. So lubrication, make sure your bolts are tight, make sure your carriages on your linear rails are running true. And if all of that fails, contact Anycubic. Anycubic has pretty decent customer support. We've had to deal with them in the past when we had our original Anycubic wash and cure die on us. It is still dead. It's actually a third motherboard it's been through and I gave up and just bought the bigger one gonna arduino hack it one day first few prints have elephant's foots uh first off nice leatherman very nice but we can see that they've tried adjusting their bed level height reducing bottom exposure time from 30 seconds to 25 without any noticeable changes using an elegoo saturn got a few of those plant resin don't like that stuff with five bottom layers and the cubes are also 1.05 too small on the z-axis well the cubes being too small on the z-axis makes perfect sense you are dealing with some elephant's foot this is no surprise you need to re-level your bed that is the first thing that i'd recommend doing and we talked about this in the resin maintenance video that I don't use the leveling card that the printer comes with. I level to the FEP because the FEP is actually what I need to level to. So I would make sure that your resin vat is totally clean or preferably empty and then go ahead and level to that. Give that a shot. A little bit of elephant's foot is normal though. It is not common for people to be printing directly on their resin print surface, but, but, Lychee Slicer along with UV tools are actually working to solve this problem. So for those of you that want to print directly onto your build service and you deal with those elephant's feet, you're in luck. The fix is coming soon, I hope. We can also see that the bridging is not great. That's expected, right? It's a resin printer. So I might look at also increasing your normal exposure times, but that's not really anything to worry about at this point. I believe that this is all a bed leveling thing, but because I don't print directly on the print bed, I don't really care about elephant's foot problems because they're not a concern to me. It's not something that is ever a problem. So we don't bother with it. But I know that there are people out there that do and getting that perfect first layer is incredibly valuable. And yes, you are heavily exposing those first few layers. So the chances of a little bit of light bleed potentially, as well as them squishing are quite high. This is just kind of part and parcel for what's going on. If you're brand new to resin printing and you're not going to print on your build service for whatever reason, I don't think that this is all that big of a deal. What it does show is you have superior bed adhesion. So, you know, bonus nachos for that. But ultimately, I don't really have a problem here. Let me know what you guys think down in those comments, though. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this episode of Print Fix Friday. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on these fails. Did I get those fixes right? I'd love to know your opinions. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. I had a lot of garlic for dinner. Ain't no vampires gonna get me today. That and I definitely have ammo that's coated in silver. <laughs>Thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names are listed right next to me. If you want to join the elite group of musketeers, get access to our super secret discord and many other perks, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D musketeers or by clicking the join button right below this video. If you're looking for something else to watch right below me will be the entire print fix Friday series where you can look at all the other fails that we've covered here on this channel and right now,
right next to that will be, as always, the printer maintenance video. I will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.